Okay, so problem number one says function g is defined by g of x is equal to 3x plus 8. What is the value of g of 12? So we're just going to plug in 12 wherever we see that x. So first we're going to do whatever is inside the parentheses, which is 12 plus 8, which is equal to 20. And then 20 times 3 is 60. So the answer is going to be d. So whatever they give you as the value, that's what you plug in as the x, and then you can go ahead and solve. Very simple. All right, so let's go ahead to go to problem number two. It says, which of the following is an equation of a line that passes through the point zero, zero and is perpendicular to the line shown above? Okay, so we have to figure out what the equation of this line is so that we can find a line that's perpendicular. So if we remember, a line is written as y equals mx plus b. The b represents the um, y-intercept. The m represents the slope. So the slope of this line, it's a negative line because it's going down. So it's going down one, two, three, four. So it's going down four, and it's going over one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Okay. So this line has a slope of negative 4 over 5. So when you're talking about a line that's parallel, a line that's parallel is going to have the exact same slope. So parallel lines, if you want to write a note, parallel lines, they have the exact same slope. But perpendicular lines have the opposite slope. So the way you get a perpendicular slope would be you would flip this fraction over, 5 over 4, and instead of it being negative, it would be a positive. So a perpendicular line will have 5 over 4 as the slope. So now you can just look at these equations, A, B, C, and D, and say which ones don't have 5 over 4 as a slope. Well, this one has negative 4 over 5, so that can't be the answer. And this one has negative 4 over 5, so that cannot be the answer. So it's either going to be A or B, because they are the only ones who have a perpendicular slope to this one, okay? So remember, a line is made up of y equals mx plus b. So we filled in what the slope is, or the m, but now we have to figure out what the b is. The b represents the y-intercept. Y-intercept is any point that starts with zero, and then there's a point here. So they already give us that. It's zero comma zero. So the y-intercept is just zero. So the slope of the line should be y is equal to 5 over 4x plus 0, or you could just write it as y is equal to 5 over 4x, and that's equal to line A. So we went over a few concepts in this one. Just as a reminder, when you're talking about um, lines, you write it in slope-intercept form. The m represents the slope. The b represents the y-intercept. Parallel lines have the exact same slope. Perpendicular lines have the opposite slope. So because we know that this line was perpendicular to the line that we saw, we found the slope of the line that we have, and then we found the opposite, which is we just flip the fraction around and we change it from a negative to a positive, and then we were able to figure out what the y-intercept was because a y-intercept is just any point with zero comma a blank. So because we had zero comma zero, we knew that the y-intercept was just zero, and that the equation of our line should be y is equal to 5 over 4x. Again, guys, this is just a brief review of these concepts. They're assuming that you guys have gone over this already. If you haven't, please let me know. I may make a full breakdown video where I just teach you guys about graphing. Let me know if you guys need that. So let's go ahead and go to problem number three. It says the surface area of a right rectangular prism can be found by finding the sum of the area of each of the faces of the prism. Okay, so they're just asking us, can we find the total surface area? So we literally just have to find the area of each one of the sides. So remember that a rectangular prism has two sides. Uh, sorry, a rectangular prism has six sides, and each side has a double. So for example, this front side, 3 by 9, has a, a back side that's 3 by 9. And so this side, which is 4 by 3, has a double on the other side, 4 by 3. And then the side on the top would be 4 times 9. 
And so that one also has a double on the bottom, which is four times nine. So now we're just gonna multiply these all out and we're just gonna add them together. Nine times three is 27, 27, 12, 12, 36, 36. And then we're gonna add all those numbers together. 27 and 27 is 54. 12 and 12 is 24. 36 and 36 is 72. And when we add 54 plus 24, that's 78 plus 72, which is equal to 150. So our answer is going to be 150 centimeters squared. So this problem was very simple. You just had to remember that a rectangular prism has six sides. Each side has an opposite side that's the same. So you would double each of the measurements and then you just add them all together and you're able to get the total surface area. So it's just about multiplying and getting the right answer. That should be simple for you guys. But again, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need any extra practice multiplying double digit numbers. I have a workbook that actually lets you practice that in a safe space so you don't have to feel bad if you haven't been in school in a while. All right, so question number four. It says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this right here? So I'm gonna write it out and I'm gonna erase some of the other work that I've done just to make room for it and just to avoid distractions. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that and we're gonna go ahead and write this out. So it is x plus seven, x squared minus three x plus two. And we're gonna go ahead and multiply this out. So we're gonna start by multiplying x times everything in the second box. So x times x squared is x to the third power x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times 2 is plus 2x. Now that we've multiplied everything by the x, we have to multiply everything by the 7. So 7 times x squared is 7x squared. 7 times negative 3x is negative 21x. And 7 times 2 is 14. Now that we multiplied everything together, we can go ahead and add them. So we have 14 at this end, and then net 2x minus 21x is negative 19x. Negative 3x squared plus 7x squared would be positive 4x squared. And then we just bring down the x to the third because we don't have anything to combine that with. So our answer would be this, and that would mean our answer is going to be b. So in this problem, you have to practice multiplying exponents. You had to practice that. We've practiced that in a few of my videos. You can tune into the other video that I did where I was multiplying um, variables that have different exponents. It's really important that you practice this skill. This part of the test is called advanced. So they're, they're not only expecting you to remember how to do the basics, but they want you to now be able to apply basic concepts in an advanced way. So that's why I'm not breaking down every single part of the problem because at this point they're expecting you to be advanced. So what do you do if you feel like you're not advanced? That's totally okay. That's totally fine. A lot of people haven't been in school in a very long time. If you feel like you need extra practice, I'm going to link my other videos in this video. So I'm going to link it in my description box. But you guys also, if I've been mentioning my AccuPlacer workbook, if you need help practicing the basics that's what that is that's what i created that for because i know a lot of you haven't been in school in a while and i know sometimes you just need a little bit of a refresher so if you find that the concepts in this video are a little bit too complicated or a little bit too advanced for you let me know or you could just follow the link for my accuplacer workbook and just as a reminder anybody who makes a purchase of that it that money just goes back to the business so that I can continue making more videos for you guys. All right, so do you guys have one more problem in you? Can we go ahead and do problem number five? What do you think? All right, I think we could do problem number five. I think we're much stronger than we look. All right, so question five says, the graph above shows the cost in dollars of apples as a function. And then it says, the equation to the right represents the cost of pairs. So this is the cost of pairs. This um, line represents the cost of apples. And they pretty much just want us to compare the cost of apples to the cost of pairs. Now, they're talking about 
the cost per pound. So anytime you're talking about a cost per pound or anything per anything else, you're just talking about the rate of change. So when you're looking at a graph and you're referring to the rate of change, you're usually just talking about the slope. So if we can find the slope of this line for the cost of apples, then we can find the rate of change or how much each apple costs. So we can start at zero, zero because that's an exact point. And let's go ahead and find another point in the graph. This is an exact point. And let's see what the slope is. So it's positive because you have to go up one, two, three, four. So it's four. And then you got to go over one, two, three. So the slope of this line is four over three. So remember, if the rate of change is equivalent to how much each apple costs, four over three would be equal to 1.33. So it would be $1.33 per apple. Okay, well then how much per pair? Well, in the equation, the equation represents the pair costs. So the 7 over 5 is the slope or the rate of change for the pair. So 7 over 5 is equivalent to 1 and 2 fifths. And 1 and 2 fifths can be written as 1.40 or $1.40. So you may be looking and saying, whoa, 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 Miss Amber, how did you go from seven over five to one and two fifths? That's just changing an improper fraction into a mixed number. Again, that is just a basic concept in math. Now, if you struggle with that, please let me know and I can tell you how we can practice that. But if you are with me and you're sticking with this because it's an advanced test, we can go from one and two fifths to $1.40 and that's $1.40 per pair. So what is the difference? $1.40 minus $1.33 is $0.07. Cents. So the difference is $0.07 cents per pound. So the answer is going to be A. Now, I know we went through this pretty quickly, but I just want to prepare you guys. This is an advanced placement test. This is the advanced portion. So I want to just be able to go through the problems as they expect you to go through the problems, which is to have basic skills and to be able to use those basic skills to answer more advanced questions. But I also completely understand that a lot of people have not been in school in a while and they're like, whoa, I need to practice the basics. Some of you may have done this and said, OK, now that you've explained the problems, I know exactly what to do and I can move forward. Some of you guys are like, no, I need to practice the basics. If you need to practice the basics, please let me know in the comments. But you can also just, as I said earlier, you can just look in the description box and you can click on my AccuPlacer workbook and that practices adding fractions, converting fractions, multiplying multi-digit numbers, um, changing decimals into fractions, fractions into decimals, long division. It, it helps with all the basics so that when you guys do take an advanced test, you already have those skills required in order to answer these more complicated questions. So again, guys, please put in the comments anything you need from me. Please let me know any questions you have. Please let me know what you need from me because I really want you guys to do well on your tests. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Happy studying.